Billy was a young adventurous boy. He loved to go for long walks in the woods behind his grandparents' house. He and his dog Skippy would run and play through the woods all day long. Billy would chase Skippy, and Skippy would chase Billy. They would run and jump and skip and play fetch or hide and seek or tug of war with a stick. Sometimes, if they were feeling particularly mischievous, Billy and Skippy would sneak into his grandmother's kitchen and steal a snack, all while his grandmother pretended not to notice. Billy and Skippy played other games, too. Billy would pretend to be a pirate, or a knight, or a wizard, always accompanied by Skippy the Beagle, who would always transform into a giant wolf or a huge noble hound whenever they began to play pretend. They would go deep into the woods and search for monsters to fight, or lost treasures, or hidden magical creatures. Billy would always bring back some souvenir or another from his adventures and show them off proudly to his grandparents. Sometimes it would be a scratch that he pretended was a gaping wound from a battle with a forest giant, or rocks that were actually jewels from the end of a rainbow, or sometimes he would bring back the feathers of a mighty bird that were in reality just leaves. Billy's grandfather loved to hear about his stories and would share some of his own from his childhood, all while his grandmother rolled her eyes and told Billy to leave his treasures outside and to go wash up. The only consolation she ever had was whatever mess Billy made of himself, she could always send him home to be his parents' problem. One day, Billy and Skippy set out into the woods in search of some grand adventure. Billy envisioned fighting pirates around his grandparents' pond, or digging for buried treasure deep in the woods. But Skippy had other plans and wanted to play tag. He nuzzled Billy's hand before running deep into the woods. Billy took off after him without thinking and chased the dog for several minutes before he caught up. They played tag in the woods for over an hour before Billy collapsed from exhaustion. Skippy walked over to him and sat down next to him, panting heavily the entire time. Billy pet Skippy while he caught his breath, and soon the two were up and moving again. Billy realized after a moment that he was lost, and he got scared. He and Skippy began looking around for a way back home. Billy was about to give up when he saw something strange. In front of him was a large tree made entirely out of candy. Billy couldn't believe his eyes, but Skippy ran over to the tree and began gnawing on a root. Billy felt a shiver of excitement run through him as he ran over to the tree. He reached out and grabbed a twig that was made out of licorice. The leaves of the tree were made out of chocolate, and the fruits were all sorts of sweets. It had gumdrops, taffy, marshmallow, hard mint candies, and chocolates. It was as if Billy were in a dream. He ate until he was stuffed, and then he stuffed his pockets with candies. When he had finished gorging himself, he looked around the tree and noticed that there were even more candy trees in the distance. Billy and Skippy followed a trail of candy trees until the whole forest became candy. There were chocolate creeks and root beer waterfalls, rocks made out of hard candies, moss made out of sponge cake, marshmallow mushrooms, fallen logs made out of chocolate cake, and rocks made out of fudge. Even the animals were candy. Every animal was either a gummy or a chocolate, and they scurried all around the boy and his dog. It was as if he had stepped into some sort of magical realm of sweets. He and Skippy ran and skipped through the woods, stopping every now and then to take a bite of a flower or a tree or a rock. Billy wasn't sure where he was anymore, but he was no longer scared of being lost. He wanted to stay and explore the magical forest around him. He and Skippy followed a trail through the forest, laughing and frolicking until they saw smoke in the distance. Without warning, Skippy began to growl, but Billy gave him a harsh look and the two followed the smoke. As they walked towards the smoke, Billy wondered who had made the candy forest, and if his grandparents knew about it. He had explored their forest more times than he could count, and he thought he knew it inside and out, but he had never seen anything like the candy forest before. He wondered if his grandpa had made it up for him as a surprise, and if he would find his grandparents when he found the smoke. His grandparents did give him lots of treats, even though his parents didn't like it. He could picture them waiting for him with a smile, and he began running even more excitedly towards the smoke. Something felt strange to Billy as he got closer to the source of the smoke. He wondered what was burning. It was a long way to find wood, and he doubted that the candy trees burned very well. He also had a strange feeling in his stomach. He felt like something was wrong, but it could have just been all the candy he had eaten. Skippy seemed nervous too, and he considered turning around and heading back home. But he didn't even know which way home was, and he was hoping that his grandparents had made a fire and were waiting to take him home. So, he kept walking, and Skippy followed close behind. As he was walking towards the smoke, Skippy began to growl again. He was about to chastise the dog when a fox ran past him in the opposite direction. It looked odd to Billy for some reason, and he couldn't figure out why. He had been stunned at the sight of the fox, and it was only after he shook himself out of his daze that he realized what was wrong. The fox wasn't made out of candy. After wandering through the candy forest for so long, a normal-looking animal felt strange to Billy. He wondered what it meant, but soon forgot all about the fox. As he got closer to the smoke, he began to smell it. 
It smelled like firewood, without any hint of the sweet odor that had been coming from the forest all around him. For some reason, it smelled better to him than the candy, and he began to run towards it. Skippy was still nervous, but he followed behind Billy, trying to keep up with the boy. Billy ran hard and fast before bursting into the clearing. He stopped quickly, and almost fell on his face, but managed to regain his balance, and he got a good look at what had been making the smoke. He gasped as he looked at the clearing. It was a house made entirely out of candy. The roof was made out of cookie shingles, the walls had a hard candy exterior for the first floor that looked like rocks, and the second floor had long chocolate bars for wooden siding. The windows were made out of glass candy, and the door was made out of chocolate bars. The hard candy stones had marshmallow fluff for mortar, and the cookie shingles had icing to hold them together. The chimney was made out of cake bricks with icing for mortar. Out in front of the house was a chocolate fountain, and a fence made out of candy canes. The garden had marshmallow bunnies eating waffle flowers. The path to the house was made out of more chocolate bricks, with peanut butter to hold them together. The house was beautiful, which was more than can be said for its owner. Out in front of the house was a short, ugly woman. She stood a little under five feet, with curled wooden shoes and a simple brown dress with white lace. She had a long, hooked nose with a large wart on the end of it. There was a big mole above her bushy unibrow, and her teeth were crooked and seemed to jut out from her mouth. She had deep wrinkles and an ugly grin, and her hands looked gnarled and worn. Billy thought about running away or saying something about her appearance, but his grandmother had taught him not to be rude. So instead, Billy walked up and introduced himself. The lady seemed kind enough. She commented on his manners and she offered Billy a piece of chocolate. Billy wasn't sure if she was a baker or if she was about to add a new addition to her house, but he accepted the chocolate and ate it. It was the sweetest chocolate he had ever tasted. It melted in his mouth and before he knew it, the chocolate was gone. He told her how good the chocolate was and asked her if he could have any more. She laughed and told him that she had plenty inside the house, and that he could come inside and help himself to all the chocolate he could eat. Her laugh unsettled him, but she still seemed nice, and the chocolate was so good that he didn't give it a second thought. He followed her inside the house gladly. Inside the house was even more amazing than outside the house. All the furniture was candy too, and throughout the house the candy seemed to be alive. Many pieces of candy were moving about the house doing chores. The old lady led Billy into the kitchen and gave him another piece of candy. She asked him if he wanted to help her cook more treats, and Billy happily agreed. She began gathering strange ingredients that didn't look very much like candy to Billy. She gathered bugs and mushrooms and bones and other odd things, and Billy wondered what kind of candy she would make from them, or if it would taste good. She told him that she needed one more ingredient, and pointed to a box covered in a sheet. Billy went to retrieve whatever was in the box, but it was empty. He told her as much, but she seemed convinced that there was something inside, and told him to take a closer look. He walked to the back of the box in time to hear a loud crashing sound as the box closed behind him. The woman pulled the sheet off the box and began to laugh, and it was then that Billy realized he was trapped inside a cage. He began to shake the bars of the cage, but it was no good. Billy shouted at the woman to let him out, but she only laughed and told him that he would be her next tasty treat. Billy screamed until his throat was hoarse, and then he began to cry. All the while, the woman continued to add worse and worse things to her cooking pot. She seemed to enjoy hearing him cry, and she began to hum and sing while she cooked. Billy hugged his knees and cried some more. He wanted to believe that his grandparents would save him, but he knew they wouldn't be able to find him. His crying began to grow quieter, and he sat in silence with tears running down his face. He watched as she prepared her pot. She brought the pot to a boil by burning logs underneath the stove. As she cooked, she would go back and forth between the stove and the pantry. Each time, she would bring back new ingredients or more logs to throw under the fire. She moved with surprising speed for someone her age, and she didn't seem to grow tired at all. As she cooked, Billy could feel the room growing hotter and hotter, and he began to sweat as he watched her work. He had no idea how she could stand the heat. She seemed to be sweating from the stove too, but she kept adding logs to the fire. Billy watched with a mixture of wonder and terror as the room grew hotter and the pot began to glow. The nasty concoction inside the pot began to change colors, from blue to green to brown to pink to yellow to even black. The colors seemed to change by the second, and she seemed to be singing to the pot. He didn't understand what she was saying, but it seemed to help the pot boil even more fiercely, and the contents of the pot began to swirl about and steam violently. Billy gulped as he realized he would soon be one of the ingredients. Billy was about to give up hope when he heard a small whining sound behind the cage. He turned in surprise to see Skipper! He was nuzzling against the side of the cage and whining at Billy. That was the last straw for Billy. He could handle being cooked into the pot, but he wouldn't let the old lady hurt Skippy. He watched the old lady cook, and he began to think of an idea. He whispered silently to Skippy that they were going to play a game, hide the treasure. 
They had played it before tons of times, and Billy knew that Skippy would know what to do. When the old lady wasn't looking, Skippy jumped up onto the counter next to the stove and stole the old woman's cooking spoon. He made a loud noise, and the woman came rushing back out to see what had happened, but Skippy was gone. Billy smiled, and she gave him an angry look. She demanded to know what the noise had been, and Billy told her that it had been him throwing himself against the cage. She laughed and jeered at him, but she left him alone and went back to cooking. It was only then that she realized her cooking spoon was gone. She demanded to know what he had done with it, but Billy just smiled and told her that she took it with her to the pantry. She began to curse and swear violently, but try as she might, she couldn't find her spoon. Angrily, she grabbed a new spoon and went back to cooking the pot. But as soon as she left, Skippy ran back in and grabbed the new spoon. The woman came back again to see what had happened, but Skippy was already gone, and Billy gave her the same answer. This continued for several hours, and at one point Skippy, in an attempt not to be spotted, ran off so quickly that he tipped the pot and poured the woman's brew all over the floor, dousing the fire and ruining the mix. Billy was overjoyed, and he began to hope that he might escape or be found in time, until the woman came back into the room to see what had happened. When she saw the mess, she was infuriated, and she screamed so violently at Billy that he began to cower inside the cage. But Billy didn't tell her about Skippy, and she still hadn't spotted the dog. Slowly, painstakingly, she began her work again, as she cleaned the floors, lit the flame again, and began cooking the pot all over. On and on she worked, toiling in the heat, and she went back and forth between the stove and the pantry, pausing every now and then to wipe the sweat from her brow. She looked exhausted, but she kept laboring away at her pot. The sun was getting lower on the horizon, and Billy was worried that he wouldn't make it home before dark. Skippy was unfazed, however, and kept dutifully stealing spoons and hiding them throughout the house in an attempt to hinder the woman's work. The dog refused to give up hope, but Billy was beginning to think it was all pointless. Just when Billy was about to give up, the woman came back from the pantry. As she reached for the spoon inside the pot, she discovered that it had also gone missing. She looked like she might explode, and Billy could swear he saw steam coming from her ears. She demanded to know where the spoon was, and Billy once again told her that she had taken it with her. She flew into a furious rage and threw things all around the kitchen, demanding to know where her spoons had gone, but Billy gave her no answer. She looked like she might try to hurt him, but he didn't say a word. When the woman had calmed down slightly, Billy decided it was as good a time as any. He spoke up and offered to help her find the spoon. She let out a sly laugh as she realized that he was trying to escape. She leaned in and showed Billy a key. It was a brilliant golden key ring. Several of the keys were silver and gold, some were even made of jade. The keys had jewels in the handles, and Billy's eyes got wide as he thought about all the treasures he had won from his adventures. She waved the keys in front of his face, and told him that the only keys to the house were with her, and that he better not try anything. She walked over and locked the front door to the house, which Billy thought was odd. His house locked from the outside, but it looked like the woman had a lock on either side of the door. She then turned and locked the pantry. Billy couldn't see what key she had used to lock the front door, but he could tell it was different than the key she had used to lock the pantry. The pantry key had been made out of solid jade with obsidian decorations on the handle. After she had locked up her supplies and the front door, she took a silver key with rubies in the handle and unlocked the cage. Dutifully, they searched the house, and Billy didn't try to run away. They searched high and low, flipping couch cushions and chairs, looking in drawers and under beds and all throughout the house. Billy felt scared but he was impressed with Skippy for having hidden the spoons so well. Finally, they had searched the whole house and neither one of the two had found a single spoon. The woman grew even more infuriated when they returned to the kitchen to find that her pot had boiled over and the contents had burned. Desperately, she ran to the pantry, unlocking it and throwing it open in an attempt to find a spoon hidden in the darkness. At that moment, Billy turned to see Skippy, and he pointed at the key on the woman's belt and shouted at the dog to fetch. The dog ran faster than Billy thought possible and grabbed the key before darting out of the pantry. Billy slammed the door behind the dog and locked the pantry with the jade key just as the woman threw herself against the door. She began to scream and howl and threaten Billy if he didn't let her out, but he ignored her. Instead, he ran for the front door and began to try every key in the lock, but none of them fit. He let out a groan of frustration, and the woman began to laugh wickedly from inside the cellar. Billy's heart sank as he realized what had happened. The woman had kept the house key separate. It was in the pantry with her, and he would have to let her out to get the key. He wanted to cry, and he sank down to the floor and buried his head in his hands. Skippy licked his face to help cheer him up, and he raised his head to pet the dog. As he went to pet the dog, though, he saw that Skippy was gone. He turned for Skippy, but the dog wasn't there. He called for the dog, and it let out a bark. Billy turned to see a hole in the wall behind the cage where he had been. Skippy had dug a hole in the wall where neither he nor the woman could have seen it. It was small 
but it was big enough for Billy to squeeze through. He shouted happily and ran for the hole in the wall, crawling through to the other side. As he was most of the way through the hole, the woman burst out of the pantry and ran to grab Billy, but he slipped through and jumped to his feet on the other side of the wall. The woman ran for the door, and Billy looked in horror, waiting for the woman to open it and grab him, but when he saw the door, he began to laugh. The other side of the front door was blocked by a ginormous pile of wooden spoons. The woman opened the door, and the spoons fell inward, burying her under a massive pile. She began to pick her way through the mess, but by then Billy and Skippy were long gone. Billy followed Skippy through the woods, and before long, they were back in part of the woods that Billy recognized. He rushed home and found his grandparents waiting for him. They looked worried and began to chastise him, and Billy felt bad for scaring them. His grandmother demanded to know where he had been, and he told her the story of the woman in the woods with the house of candy. He told her about the cage, and how Skippy had stolen the spoons, and about how he had stolen her keys as a treasure. He reached to show her the keys, and she looked mad, and was about to shout at him for bringing sticks and rocks into the house. As she was about to open her mouth, though, her words caught in her throat. She and his grandfather looked dumbfounded at the keys and asked where he had found them. Billy felt confused, and he told them again, and after a long interrogation, they finally let him go. Billy washed up and got ready for a very late dinner. He felt tired, but he also felt proud. He and Skippy had come back from their greatest adventure yet. After dinner, he settled into bed and began to dream about the next adventure he would have in the woods with Skippy. In the years to come, he and Skippy would have many more adventures, but they never returned to the candy forest, and he never saw the old woman and her wooden spoons ever again.